Hi everyone, my name is Lauren and this is Lauren's Library. Um, this week I wanted to read books from an author that I have a multitude of books built up from. And that author is, let me grab it, Sylvia Morena Garcia. So I read Sylvia Moreno Garcia's debut novel in 2019. I got it on Book of the Month. And I remember reading it and saying, I see the potential in you, girl. I see it. And I think you're going to do great things in the future. Like there was just something missing in this debut novel that I said, she's going to have it. She's going to have it. Not in this book, but she's going to have it in another book. So I've been collecting all these books from her because I had faith and hope and belief in Miss Garcia that she would be able to deliver. Because in um, Gods of Jade and Shadow, I, um, I was reading and... It was just like, I was like, something's about to happen that's just going to take this book over the edge. Something's going to happen, but it never happened. So I was a little bit let down. But this book is about a girl. She's from this small village in Mexico, and she opens like this secret chest or something that she finds in her grandmother's room. And it releases like, um, I don't remember. I read this so long ago. And it releases kind of like this demon guy who he's like, oh, you have to come with me to travel to like the like they, they just go on these adventures around the city of Mexico City and everything but it was I don't remember much about it but I remember how I felt reading it so this is who um, I'm going to be focusing on reading from this week so now I'm going to show you the books that I plan to read from Sylvia Moreno Garcia this week um first the first book I got after um, Gods of Jade and Shadow was Mexican Gothic. Um, I don't know much about these books, so I'll tell y'all once I start reading them. But what I know is this is a um, dark fantasy or gothic fantasy, something along the lines. I don't know what it's about. But these books, all the books I'm about to show you, I only got on the faith in the name of Sylvia Marina Garcia because I know she can deliver like I said earlier so this is the first book I'm going to be reading this week and the next book that I have from her is Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia Marina Garcia and the next is The, Doc the Daughter of Dr. Moreau yes I don't know what any of these three books are about but they're going to get read, and I'm very excited to read them. Um, I've seen um, that she has other books out, and if these go well, I will order those, and we can do like a part two maybe. But let's see. I'm going to start off with Mexican Gothic. I'm go <coughs> what happened? That was you. It was you, wasn't it? It wasn't me. So I'm just going to... I'm just going <laughs> to... So the first book I'm starting off with this week or however long it takes me to read these three books who knows what will happen is mexican gothic and i'll check in with y'all on my first update okay hi everyone i'm back for my update on oh, mexican gothic i'm halfway and so i can now tell you what it's about so we're following this girl young adult she's named Noemi and she lives in Mexico City and she comes home from a party and her dad's like um can I come in my office so we can discuss something that's going on with your cousin and so she comes in sits down and he get he says I received this letter from your cousin and it's worrying me and her cousin Catalina she is recently married and she moved in with her husband's family his name is Virgil if I remember correctly his name is Virgil and the dad her dad really doesn't trust him that much Catalina her immediate family has passed so she's lived a good majority of her life with Noemi and her dad and their family and so her dad doesn't really trust Catalina's um new husband and so she's re they received this letter from um Catalina from this this estate in the mountains somewhere in Mexico I forget the name of it 
off the top of my head but basically the letter is talking about how she doesn't feel safe and it's just a very manic letter and so um, Noemi's father sends her he says I want you to go up there and see what's going on and if there's an issue with her where we might need to um, sub uh, admit her not submit admit her to a psychiatric hospital so Noemi travels up there um, they call it like the highest place or something like because there it's like a, this huge estate that's separate from the small little village that it's in because this was recently a mining town and um, the family that Catalina married into are Englishmen who settled here for the mines and employed some of the Mexican um, locals to work in the mines but there's been there's a lot of controversy surrounding that mystery that I guess will later be revealed but um, Noemi gets there and it's all very strange and I like the way it's written because she'll see things at first glance but then like a couple paragraphs later she'll go back and look at that or she'll um, like see in her not see in her mind but she'll she said realize actually what she's seeing and she's like oh the walls are this is a very old estate but it looks very nice but then she's like oh but there's mold growing on the walls and the same with the town like she said oh when, like when she came into town she was like oh the village is so colorful oh but when I look closer the paint is chipping and I think that's just kind of a, a, um, a writing tool to show that the, whatever's happening in this plot is like it may seem one way but it's another it's a completely different way but anyway Noemi gets to um, this estate and it's very strange they don't want her to talk to her cousin like as soon as she like has like two sentences with her cousin they're like okay she needs to take her medicine leave her alone and um, because um, in this estate there's her husband Catalina's husband Virgil and his father Howard his cousin Francis and his aunt Florence and Florence is the one that's been taking care of Catalina while um, she's been sick they're saying she has tuberculosis but uh, Noemi oh I don't want to say that that's a spoiler I almost gave everything away but um, yeah Catalina she just doesn't believe that she has tuberculosis because it just seems like her cousin will be in and out and the symptoms don't seem like tuberculosis and there's just a lot of strange things happening like every night she's having these strange dreams and like when she's out in the garden or something she sees something strange everybody in this house acts strange it's just all very strange so I'm not sure where the rest of the book is going but I'm curious to see where we end um, my feelings for the book right now I, I don't really have any feelings I'm like literally in the middle I'm not hating it but I'm also not loving it so uh, it's kind of in the middle, but I'll come back to you all when I finish it. I'm halfway, literally. I stopped halfway, and I said I'm going to update them halfway. But I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Okay, everyone, I'm back with an update on Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Marina Garcia. Um, last time I checked in with you all, I was halfway around the 150-page mark, and now I am finished. Um, and also last time when I spoke with you, I wasn't sure how I felt about what was going on in the book. Um, and in conclusion, I can say that this is 100% going on the most bizarre books I think I've ever read in my lifetime. I need to do a video on that, like bizarre books I read. I think that'd be a good video. But anyways... I'm still kind of left perplexed. I enjoyed the second half, I think, more than the first half. And that was obviously because we were getting more answers because we're in the same position as our main character, Noemi, where she is doesn't know what's going on, doesn't know if what she's hearing and seeing is real or if they're just dreams or is she hallucinating or what's going on in this house. And we don't start to get answers until probably like the last... 80 pages of the book and um yeah I ended up giving it four stars and that's tentative right now I think I need because I literally just finished so I don't know exactly where my thoughts are landing but I did enjoy it did I enjoy it um more than her previous book that the other book that I've read um before this video before making this video 
I would say yes. I feel like she had more of a clear vision in this one, if that makes any sense. And I feel like um, the uh, pacing, because I've seen people say that they had an issue with the pacing of this book, because like I said earlier, we don't really get answers about what's going on until we literally the last 80 pages of the book. And I think it was intentional. So I'm taking that into consideration on how I feel about the book. And um, yeah, I can't really tell you what happened in the second half, but we do get answers. And the answers are wild. Um, but I enjoyed how everything played out. I'm literally telling you all my thoughts and trying to come to a conclusion while <laughs> talking about it with you all. But I like how everything turned out. I like how the story ended and how we got to that ending. So yeah, I enjoyed it. I would say I enjoyed it. And so yeah, I gave it four stars. <clears throat> and I'm excited to read um, the rest of the books I have for this video. So the next one that I'm planning on reading is Velvet Was the Night. I'm not sure what this one is about either, but I'm excited because Sylvia Moreno Garcia, that is one thing I can say that she, her writing is beautiful. Her writing is um, intentional. And I could write an entire essay on that book. The way that my mind was, I felt like I was back in college, I mean high school and reading Wuthering Heights. And I, I can say that. So I'm excited to see what her story, where her storytelling goes in this one. And I literally have no idea what it's about. I just saw 1970s Mexico City when I just opened the flap. But yeah, I'll come back with an update on this one for you all. Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye. Okay, Carter update since um, it's late and I'm not prepared to be on camera. But update, quick update on Velvet was the night. Um, it's a DNF. Sorry to say, but um, I did not like this. I did not like where it was going. I think I read only 15 pages, but there was a lot going on, but also nothing. It was just too much going on with nothing else happening. I was just over explanations that would just have my mind not focusing on what was being told to me and yeah I just didn't care to finish the book anymore so maybe I'll come back to it one day but for right now it's a DNF um, and once uh, I DNF that um, I started because it is late right now but I DNF that one pretty early and then I started The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. And I'm already halfway through this one. And I'm enjoying it much more than Velvet Was the Night. Um, but since it's late, I'll give you an, more of an update in the morning. Maybe I'll finish this by the morning. I'm going to read some more and see um, how long I can stay up to, and see how far I get. And I'll be able to give you all more of an update um, with my face in the camera and tell you what this one is about. Talk to you all soon, bye bye. All right everybody, so I'm here to give you all a quick update on my reading for this Sylvia Moreno Garcia vlog. Um, I updated you all last night when I was extremely exhausted and let you all know that I DNF'd, I did not finish, Velvet well, was the night. Um, just to reiterate what I said last night, um, it was just a lot of characters and stuff happening that I didn't care about because it wasn't enough, because there wasn't enough happening at all because we would take little happenings and then over explain them to me. That's how I felt reading it last night. But I just did not, I was not vibing with it so I just didn't DNF'd it. Um, and then when I read the synopsis, because I don't usually don't read the synopsis of books that I found interesting previously. I just pick them up even if I don't remember any specific details. So I read the blurb and I was just like, <clears throat> sorry, I was just like, I don't think I'm interested in this story anyways. I think it's like a missing persons mystery or something. I don't know. But I think I just picked this for Book of the Month because it was Sylvia Moreno Garcia. And so, but yeah, I did not finish this one. And I don't have no interest of continuing or trying to um, finish it in the future. So, no. That's a DNF. And then, so, I picked up 
uh, The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. And I finished it actually. I've, there's no bookmark. <laughs> um, I finished it this morning and I'm giving it four stars. Um, this one is about um, a doctor. Well, it's not about him, but we follow a story of his the doctor's daughter but the doctor is in Mexico in this small um what do you call it hacienda where he's being uh paid by this very rich man to um I don't know is there is there a let me yeah it says it in the in the description so in the summary so he's being paid by this rich man to create these things called hybrids well to replace slavery because at this point in Mexico slavery has been banned even though it discusses the book even discusses that there are ways that um, these rich people worked around that new law where they say oh you have to pay me back in this debt indentured servant indentured indentured servants basically so um, this rich man is paying Dr. Moreau to create these hybrids to replace workers, um, basically free labor. And so um, there he's in this hacienda by himself um, along with his daughter and like um, a helper along with the hybrids. I think it was like Ramona or something, like the, like the housewoman or whatever. But we follow the two characters we actually follow and get their perspective are the doctor's daughter, uh, Carlotta and um this character that get, gets introduced like right at the beginning his name is montgomery and he's being interviewed when we first entered or not interviewed but introduced to dr moreau as kind of a new um overseer for this rich man named dr i mean not doctor he was in a mr lazalde as who's uh, Miss Dr. Moreau is working for it. So Montgomery is basically going to be like the overseer, make sure everything is run, if um, bring in supplies and everything. And so we're following Montgomery and Carlotta, uh, Carlotta's POV. I'm getting tongue twisted. POV. And so Carlotta, we int were introduced to her. She's 14 years old. Um, her dad is letting her uh, be more involved involved in like the stuff he does in his laboratory like um she'll he'll give her like a minuscule task to do and then montgomery we're seeing him learning of everything that's going on at this hacienda with dr moreau and we're also learning his background how he's an alcoholic and why he's an alcoholic and what happened in his past relationships with his sister his father and um his uh, estranged wife so in the second part um, what's her name? Carlotta is older. She's 20 years old now. And they get these unexpected guests um, to the hacienda. And it turns out that it's Mr. Lazaldi. Am I saying his right name correctly? Lazaldi. Yeah, Lazaldi. Eduardo Lazaldi's. Well, Mr. Lazaldi's son's name is Eduardo Lazaldi. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, so he's come to visit with his cousin. And when they see Carlotta, they're both like amazed they're like oh she's so beautiful blah, blah blah and but montgomery gets kind of jealous because they've been kind of secluded in this hacienda no outsiders carlotta's never met any outsiders and she, the only people she knows are her dad montgomery and the uh ramona and the uh, hybrids and so when she's intrigued as well and so her dad pulls her, her aside and he's like i need you to marry Eduardo Lizaldi because I think his father is about to cut off my financial supply. We have nowhere to go. We're, I have nothing to do once he shuts down my experiments. These are my experiments, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and so she's kind of put off at first, and but she kind of uh, goes um, along with it, and they end up falling in love. I don't know if it really was love, but that's what, it, that's what we were told. <laughs> But um, she, we're following just all the happenings and goings of this um, hacienda. But we also, there's like this twist at the end with Dr. Moreau and his daughter and everything that's going on behind the scenes or um, in the hacienda. And 
Um, they're trying to, and Dr. Moreau is trying to keep this a secret. Montgomery and um, Carlotta, they don't know what's going on. We're just seeing from their perspective of how secretive Dr. Moreau is and how off put he is um, with um, having to keep the secret because although his dad knows, Mr. Lizaldi knows what he's, his experiments are, his son doesn't know. But it's just a whole rigmarole. But I enjoyed it. I don't know if my explanation came across accurately, but I enjoyed it. Um, it kind of, I wouldn't say it was slow. There were moments where I lost focus, and that's why I gave it a four stars. There was just something that, I don't know. I don't know what she could have done different because this is the story she wanted to tell, and I, enjoy, I enjoyed where the story ended and began, how we ended. We started and ended, but... They're just, I, it was just missing that spark for me in order to give it that five stars. So yeah, um, what else can I say about this? So this also, while I was reading this, it reminded me of a book that I read a long time ago, like probably my freshman year of high school called The Madman's Daughter. And I got similar vibes to this one. I wonder, um, he said this. I don't think so. I'd have to look and see, but because this I know is based on a classic, but I've never read that classic. Um, it's in the. It was in the afterward. Let me see. The Island of Doctor Moreau by H. G. Wells. I've never read that, so I would need to go back and see if the Madman's Daughter is also based on that because they are. They have similar vibes. I think the. Um, Madman's Daughter is much more dark and um, gothic, no pun intended, because I'm about to wrap this video up. But yeah, I found similarities between the two, and I enjoyed both. I think I gave that one a four star as well. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on the daughter of Dr. Mar oh, one more thing. One more thing. So we're introduced to Carlotta. She's 14 years old, and when we do the test, the time jump 60 years later she's 20 and her dad tells her okay you need to marry this boy in order for us to stay here in this hacienda and for me to keep doing my experiments and there's like a flip a switch flipped with Carlotta that just caught me off guard because the way her character is characterized in the first half of the book she seems very innocent and not knowing much but what's in um, her hacienda and seeing and asking questions like what is snow like it just it's kind of a whimsical girl and then when after she has that conversation with her dad about marriage and having to marry Eduardo Lizaldi it's kind of like this switch is and she just feels like an entirely different character and that's one thing I didn't know how I felt about so if you've read this book um let me know your thoughts on that because I don't know how I feel about it, it just seemed very um strange because she felt like a completely different character like she she was very sultry and all this I was just lost and if you know I don't know there's a twist and I don't know if that twist has something to do with that her character flip but I don't know so if you read it let me know but four stars for the doc the daughter of Dr. Moreau so that's all the books I've read um if you skipped over it for some reason. I gave Mexican Gothic four stars, Daughter of Dr. Moreau four stars, and a DNF Velvet was the night. So my conclusion, what can I say about my conclusion for Silvia Moreno Garcia? I think I would read um, more of her books, but I would need to read the summary to determine if it'd be something I would want to read. Because as we can see, that unless this is a, um, uh, uh, like a, what's the word? <laughs> Unless this is a, um, this is just an outsider, an outlier, and I'm gonna enjoy every single one of her other books. But I want to see, I want to keep reading more books to see if I can find a five star out of Sylvia Morena Garcia's catalog because I think her writing, her writing is good, and her ideas of where she wants a story to go are very unique and I want to see what else she can come up with so I will continue to read more of her books I know she has 
there's I don't know the titles, but I know there's one with green cover and a girl on the front, and then there's one with a dark cover and a wolf and a girl. Uh, I don't know the titles, but they're like literally on the tip of my tongue in the front of my brain, but I can't say it. So I will maybe we'll do a part two once I get those other books. But these are all the books that I own by her. So this one's going out the door, but these are going back on the shelf. And I'll see one day, I'll maybe I'll pick up um, her other books and we'll do a part two. So if you enjoyed watching this video, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.